ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ಕಂಸಚಾನೂರಮರ್ದನಂ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಓಡೇಷನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿಫರ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಮೋರ್ಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ in chapter 6 entitled atma atma sanjyam yoga yoga of meditation that's the highlight of this chapter gives you insight into raj yoga In verse number 29, which I will be reiterating. Sarvabhūtāsthaṁ ātmānam sarvabhūtāni chātmani ikṣate yoga yuktātmā sarvatra samadarshanah the topic is in a very advanced stage the goal that you are working for the goal is self realization nothing more but the self the whole world is a selfish project <laughs> <laughs> either either we stay a fish in a shell or get out of the shell if we stay trapped by the, the world of karma with the cycle of birth and death then the self you are dealing with is selfish ego self ego based identity is selfishness that puts you into a into a fish egg but ego a face the movement ego is not your reality even when you go to sleep ego is not there and so ultimately in the state of enlightenment that ego should not become your obstructive factor so that's mukti when you are out of ego's control then you are the real self give you more simple way to understand think of the sun as the self countless reflected suns are in so many jars of water each reflected self has developed its own identity this jar is my house i'm better than all those other souls living in different houses let's give you a simple when you are dealing with that type of attitude it is selfish attitude little self s is become a little s and it's not yes but when you turn your attention to who am i the first point to understand no matter how little or big your self that self is the source of all your happiness that self is your real substance and support so therefore it becomes very important for those who want to achieve the purpose of life those who don't they stay on with the little self moving from one part to another from one body to another but if you do 
practice real religion, follow the path of integral yoga, you begin to develop an understanding that I am not confined to the pot. I am the sun. I am the jiva. Reflected sun is called jiva, in individual soul. The real sun is Paramatma, the absolute self. I am that Paramatma. That's the goal for every soul to discover. You know, something that you are attaining, something new, is not an act of karma. It's already the intrinsic reality. Karma based attainment handles your little self, either making it go into the mud of quagmire of the world process or making the ego move towards self-effacement, allowing the soul to shine. In this project, we use the term avastha and fiti. Avastha means certain states as you evolve, you spiritually advance, you begin to enjoy a state of mind that you didn't have before. In early stage you enjoy the state of mind, but it doesn't stay permanent with you. So that type of experience, which is very advanced, but doesn't stay with you, that's called avastha. In the beginning, your progress requires avastha. But if you continue with your self-effort, sustained practice, and many other qualities, vairagya, vivek, if you continue, you develop sthiti. You become centered on a certain high state. You may go up and down, but that state where you are centered, that remains steady. Again, I'll make the story short. The real center where you should be centered is your big self, real self. That was sthita pragya. Even when you center, try to center there, there will be avastha. So we have to deal with avastha, states of mind that are advanced. They bring into your mental process a special taste. You want to attain that state, the avastha but not to attain it and then get back from it, but to stay steady with it. There are three avasthas that are your goal. Jnana avastha is the highest goal. Bhava avastha is a devotion-based experience of Brahman. And Kriya Avastha Even in your active life, you view yourself being led by God within. Again, I will remind you of the great statement done by Lord Hanuman, when Rama asks, how am I related to you? And, Lord, and Hanuman says, Deha buddhyat daso. To the extent I view myself as body, and that's the practical reality of all, that's how you are working with. 
body is your foundational reality. But how should you handle that state? Dasoham. Allow your body to become an instrument in divine hand. That, that movement is Kriya Avastha. How much you succeed in allowing your body, body personality, to serve others, to help others, and to be instrumental in discovering that the same the self that you have within you, same self lies in everyone. Service opens your heart. But what type of service? What attitude? That's called Kriya, Kriya Vastha. Bhakti based attitude, Jiva Buddhya Tvadanshaka. From the point of view of the soul, I am an Ansha, I am a ray, you are the sun. This is called Bhava Vastha. You begin to develop an internal attitude that I am a ray of God. For God nothing is impossible and you are a ray when you are growing in the image of God. So therefore, nothing is impossible for you as you come to that state of understanding. Becoming a ray of God again, any state requires karmic, progressive movement, how much you succeed. Today you succeeded more in Kriya Avastha, tomorrow more in Bhava Avastha, feeling. Jnana Avastha, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the absolute reality. I am the sun. That's the absolute reality. Realizing it, that's your goal. But avastha state, in avastha state, it requires effort. And if you don't sustain the effort, you may lose that avastha. When your sadhana becomes effortless and the avastha continues, say for example, allowing your mind to become detached from the world. In the beginning it's very difficult. But through meditation and through certain degree of integration, you begin to develop degrees of detachment. And you begin to understand what it really means. Though you see adversity around you, though you find your own near and dear ones going through many turmoils, but being detached, you are in a better position to help them. When you are attached, you have to help yourself. in order to relieve a person of his headache. If you create your own headache, <laughs> then it will not be possible. So, you learn the art of grow in detachment in a progressive manner. And that becomes the Secret of Kriya Yoga. How detached you are. 
How would it react to the UV? It's a big challenging question. First, detachment towards your own body and towards your own intimate realities. Second, detachment towards your relatives around you, near and dear ones. Third, it's a big, the world that pours down lots of news from North Pole to South Pole. All the news that go on happening. Fourth is ignored by your mind. Countless jivas, souls, they are also having lots of stories behind them. Only they are not writers, but publishers. <laughs> In a world where there is so much that can agitate your mind, keep your mind agitated constantly, that in spite of all that is there, when you are developing that spiritual avastha, kriya avastha, you are developing the increasing detachment. And detachment is not missing thing, but rather you are being more fulfilled. Detaching from the world is like detaching from clouds. And attaching to reality is like developing the awareness, I am the sky. Detaching is the revelation, I am the sky. Attaching, I am dependent on the cloud. So when you go on doing this with effort, that's your sadhana. The day that effort becomes effortless, it's called siddhi, that becomes your goal. That's your goal. Goal and your practice, both are intimately related. What you practice is you are trying to bring the goal into a relative stage, which seems practical for you in your level. And in the beginning, any advanced state, you require a lot of effort. And it comes and goes. Sustain your effort, the advanced state becomes your normal state. You don't even know it is advanced. You have not been angry for, e for months and don't even know you have made a success. <laughs> but when you begin to develop the idea you are succeeding and begin to compare with others, how they are all stupid and you have passed, then you are not advancing. You are developing ego inflammation. Jnana avastha, one whose mind is purified by yoga, beholds self in all beings and all beings in the self. Jnana avastha. I, I am the sun and the sun is the reality in all the parts. I am Brahman and Brahman is the reality in all. Brahmamayam jagat that's jada. If we Become steady in it, that's your goal. Sthita prajna, that's the goal of life. 
in Gita language is Tita Pragya. Different religions will use different terms. It's in Nirvana. In 30th verse, Yo maam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati tasyaham na pranashyami sachame na pranashyati This is your bhava avastha. Feeling, devotion, meditation, blended attitude your mind. When you are advancing in devotion and meditation, Together it's called Upasana Mark. Then what type of attitude you begin to develop? For one who sees me everywhere, your bhavana, you begin to develop that just like when you see even your relatives, one is your child. Another one is your child's child, grandchild. <laughs> Another is the other one is your your normal brother. Another one is your step brother. Your bhavana is different in relation to different people. You will love them, but your love has different degrees different angles. The same movement ex expanded to the whole universe and not with different different angles. But no matter whatever you, you are encountering in your mind, whatever you are seeing, you sit down and see a little lizard. And your bhavana says, God within it. See a squirrel. If you lizard, you don't like a squirrel. <laughs> gilari. <laughs> the very word gilari. <laughs> Ghee is a kind of harupulational joy. Gil, 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 gil. <laughs> Lari waves. So even a little <laughs> squirrel <laughs> brings you through your bhavana a thrill of divine glory. And this again, this process again is progressive. You gradually build up that sensitivity, that type of bhavana. How far the bhavana should go? It should include everything. Ghat ghat me hai sai ramata. In every individual soul there is God. Go further. The entire world is permeated by. Khan khan me dhan shyam basa hai. Raj raj me shri ram raja hai. Her, even every particle, every everything in this world, all names and forms are in reality God expressing in the world through all names and forms. Even when you are feeling worried and full of anxiety, the anxiety state comes because your brain has created a certain state. Your brain chemicals have gone into a little turmoil. What I'm leading to understand is that subtler. Even that, the negative, the positive, all are actually divine. for easy understanding, in your dream. So many things are there in your dream. Good, bad, high, low. 
But the reality in your dream is you. You have become all that is in your dream. You are the reality. Then using the similar, you being Brahman, that Brahman is the reality behind all the world, the entire world process is experienced like a long dream by, a con by the conditioned mind. And since a dream is not a reality, it is the same, your own consciousness becomes all the dream that is your personal experience. Divine Consciousness has become the entire world. That Divine Consciousness is your reality. Aham Brahma. So one who sees me everywhere and sees all beings in me, I am never destroyed for him. The idea that God has rejected me, that I am so negative that I cannot, God cannot accept me, or God is far away from me. And if whenever I go to a temple, he knows I am coming, he runs away from the temple. And distancing yourself from God to such an extent that it is impossible to reach God. That illusion is broken. God cannot I am never destroyed for him. God cannot be as if destroyed, as if separated forever. Nor is he ever destroyed for me. A devotee seems to become lost, far from God. But once you have developed certain degree of purity, allegorically speaking, God begins to favor you in a special way. The Gita later says, Upadrashtanu mantacha varta bhokta maheshwara. As you become harmonized and attuned to God, there are various stages. First stage, you always realize God is watching over. Just like children always know that the mother is watching over them. And that gives a tremendous strength. And then, whenever you do something positive, God gives you a reward. He's a chocolate. <laughs> I'm referring to the internal delight. And further, it becomes so in, you become so involved with that type of being inspired, led by God, that God becomes your everything. Bharta. He is the supporter, he is the Lord, he is the master. He is all in all. You become absolute instrument in divine hand. And as it continues, ultimately you end up with being united with God. So therefore, neither God is destroyed by your 
neither can you be separated from God forever. Nor God can be separated from you. To understand that little more clearly, say you have different pots of water. And water is not, water is in different states of impurity. But the water where the water is the least impure, you see the reflection of the sun in a special way. Sun is shining over all. First point, sun has equal vision for all. But then look into the purified water. Sun has lost his equal vision. Shining more in the purified water. He didn't lose it. I'm talking it's the allegorical language. Similarly, God is in every heart. But if you have become devotee, God has gone after you. We ignore all those people. So this point, if you develop, that's called bhava vasa. Sarvabhuta sthitam yomam bhajatye tat now Kriya Vastha is described. Kriya, while you are working in the world, doing various chores, how do you relate to God and your relation to God, how does it inspire you to do your karma, your kriya? All activities that lead your soul to evolve, they are called kriya, kriya yoga. If one worships me, seated in all beings, in Kriya movement, what are you doing? You are handling people, helping them. But when you are helping them, you develop an internal attitude that you are adoring God in people. Not the monkey attitude. I'm helping, I'm going to get so much money out of it. It's a monkey business. <laughs> and I must write down every detail that I have, have helped. And go and reminding the person. Remember Christmas is coming. <laughs> How much help I have received. <laughs> When you are doing that type of service, then that's not, not the real one. In every act of service, led by your love, serving a baby, understand God has given you an opportunity to allow your heart to experience tender love. Tender love ultimately points to God's love. All loving experiences, they are not related to the objects or to the people that you go after. All loving experiences climax in God. So therefore, even the slightest act of goodness that you do is a form of adoration to God. And that you need to build up as you advance.
the whole psychology behind serving others undergoes a tremendous transfiguration. You are serving God, you know, that's the highest goal. That's, that's the ideal of Kriyavastha. Continue with the Kriyavastha, 32nd verse. Atma upamyena sarvatra samam pashyati yorjuna sukham vayadi vaduhukham sa yogi paramo mataha. O Arjuna, the yogi who sees the likeness of himself in all and thus maintains equal vision in pleasure and pain. He is considered the highest yogi. General idea of people, they always say, I'm doing so much sadhana, so much. But your sadhana attitude and should extend to all activities that you do. Whether you are doing a job, meeting with people in many, many different ways. That's, life is always, a human being is never separated from so many people. In every relation, try to understand that every soul is just like you. So instead of being quick to evaluate others, you're saying you are useless. Oh, you are good. But let's see how long you do we stay good. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you may say all those things also for a practical point. But deep in your heart level you must know that they are all just like you. Not a little, they're not any different because they are all souls. And each one experiences their life. And how they experience, you can't understand it. The bearer knows where the shoe pinches. <laughs> but another point. This form of understanding should be with detachment. You suddenly realize someone is suffering so much and your heart begins to suffer. That's not the ideal. Because then you, you, know, you are adding to the misery of the person and making yourself also miserable. Now therefore figure out, this should be your vigilant movement. Of act of kindness and compassion. Because when you commit any error, You don't want to be scolded, hurt. Same way, no one wants to be in a state of just bitter scolding without any purpose. Generally people do lots of bitter treatments. In brief, all that I'm leading to understand, just like you would handle yourself, everyone needs to be handled. So compare yourself, put yourself in the others. Other shoes. This again is not a simple matter, it is a progressive matter, how sensitive we become. As sadhana advances, atma upamyena, that's the word, 
just like you will compare yourself with others. And just like you would be treated if you have the idea, help others. You can help others. If you cannot help physically, you can pray for them. But to the extent you can help by your words, even by just looking in a nice way, even just few smiles, all that becomes a Godward movement. So the yogi who sees the likeness of himself in all and thus maintains equal vision in pleasure and pain is considered the highest yogi. Another a riddle type of statement <laughs> You see people in different experiences. The experiences are either of pleasure or of pain. But your vision remains just the same. Learn from your own eyes. Your eyes see lots of things, good and bad. But while be seeing things that are bad, your eyes don't change. While seeing things that are very good, your eyes don't change. World will con constantly present lots of turmoils. Your attitude should be of possessing that sensitive vision, the vision that is not agitated by the view of things, without being internally cruel-hearted. Profound compassion stays and also that compassion in your heart will depend upon how detached you are. The compassion that will be active, dynamic, helpful, purposeful. Otherwise, what happens? Instead of compassion, you, you show moha-based love. Moha must I love you so much. You are, you are pain. Oh, I'm suffering from that pain myself because of you. I will go with you <laughs> anywhere in the whole world. I will never leave you. You suffer, I will also suffer. <laughs> share. <laughs> <laughs> it seems very colorful, <laughs> very human. <laughs> but, a, but the ideal is not this moha based love. It is love that gets out of moha, out of delu delusional feeling, out of egoistic attachment. Then love becomes divine. So every love that you have has the same source, divine. But to the extent it, your love is moha type, then it is smoky love. In brief, your goal is to maintain your mind serene in all conditions. Your serenity should not be disturbed no matter how 
pathetic situation presents itself. Neither should swing this way or no matter how pleasant situation presents. And that includes your own subjective mind. Even if your mind presents negative, how you should stay internally steady, detached. And if the mind moves in a very pleasant way, many good things have happened, you don't know how to handle it, stay detached. So the term prasannatam yana gata that then you are really prasanna. Chit, internal level of your mind is really joyous. A joy that neither goes high or low. It's real, like the sky, it neither expands or contracts. That type of joy, the joy of Uniting yourself with God. And that, that experience comes in little degrees. Every time you promote serenity, you have touched the vision of God, a revelation of God. And now we can conclude. <laughs> Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukma Bandhana Mrityor Mukshyama Mritat Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatham